Hello. Today's um, topic for our, our study is the God of signs and wonders shows his greatness in unlikely ways. Hopefully you've read Exodus 7 verse 1 to 25. So let's open this up. Moses is now an old man of 80 and his older brother Aaron, the prophet, who is 83, are about to be used by God in a remarkable way to demonstrate that he's greater than Pharaoh by performing many signs or wonders attempting to convince him to allow the Israelites freedom from slavery to the Egyptians. These wonders are more commonly referred to as plagues, sent as proof that the one true God was far greater than all of the multiple gods of the Egyptians. Pharaoh responds in Exodus 5 too with, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord and neither will I let Israel go. God tells Moses he's actually going to make him seem like God to Pharaoh. God's used both him and Aaron at an old age, one because they're now mature in their faith and two, to show that what's about to be revealed is not by their own strength, but by his. So have we seen God use miracles and wonders in our own lives or that of others? Some might be amazing wow moments that bring great joy. Others might be oh no moments where we see the unexpected and it doesn't look so good at first sight. We need to stay calm and rest assured that God is bigger than our circumstances and stand on his promises as we see Moses doing as he exercises his faith through being obedient. The Egyptian plagues were harsh and varied to correspond to the Egyptian gods and goddesses that were prevalent during Moses' time in Egypt. Ten times God allows Pharaoh to change his mind, repent and turn to the one true God, each time increasing the severity of the consequence of the plague suffered for disobedience to his request. Ten times Pharaoh, because of pride, refuses to be taught by the Lord and receives judgments through the plagues, pronounced upon his head from Moses the Deliverer. Are there times in our lives when we're being taught a lesson the hard way? It's not that God wants to send us one problem or disaster after another, but that he wants to teach us and refine us, make us and mould us. Sometimes it might feel like we've been broken, but we know that in his hands we are safe. We are the clay and he is the potter, as it says in Isaiah 64 verse 8. But if we're resting in God and we're walking in his will, we can find that we're actually able to discern what's happening. And we have the option, as Pharaoh had, to respond after the first wake up warning or plague instead of waiting for all ten. Or we might be quick off the mark, hear and respond immediately and avoid any plagues. We see how angry he is when he says he'll bring down his fist. He gives Pharaoh ample opportunities to listen. But we know too that God already predicts that Pharaoh's not going to budge. Remember, this is actually all part of God's plan. He said he'll make Pharaoh's heart stubborn so that he can multiply his miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt. Does God judge us today as individuals and globally as nations? Are there times when we struggle to listen to him? Does he get angry with us when we're disobedient, hard-hearted and stubborn? We all need delivering from evil, as the Lord's Prayer tells us. God disciplines us because he loves us. When God disciplines us, it can feel uncomfortable. But let's be encouraged by Hebrews 12 verse 6. For the Lord disciplines those that he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. When God convicts us, it's for our own good. Guilty as charged. Ouch. But it serves the greatest purpose to bring us back to God in repentance. It's specific, actionable and designed to restore us. And there's a distinct difference between conviction from God and condemnation from the devil, which is designed to bring us down and keep us down. Pharaoh knew exactly what he was being convicted of. It was spelled out time and again. He wasn't just left with a vague sense of you're not good enough. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 to 9 to 10 reflects this process out beautifully. Yet now I am happy. Not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led to your repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended and were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. Have we known God's discipline in us at certain times in our lives? Do we listen? Do we act on it? Is it welcomed? How does God get our attention when we're in need of a wake up call? God must speak Pharaoh's language if he's to listen to that wake up call and take notice. He has to turn his world upside down using fear tactics to bring him to a place of repentance and obedience. Pharaoh must come to see 
both see and fully know that the God of Israel is bigger than his gods and that he must let the people of Israel go. So why send 10 plagues, multiple plagues, one after the other? Well, the Egyptians had gods for just about everything. A god of the Nile, a god of frogs, a god of gnats, a god of every plague that was actually sent. So in the final plague, God has to get personal with Pharaoh. It's a chance to reflect upon the cost of freedom. It comes through hardship, pain and sacrifice. Did Moses fear God? Should he have? I'm sure he would have experienced fear and trembling at all that he was being called to do. So how did he do it? He trusted God. He trusted again and again and had the promise in sight. He knew what God wanted accomplished and he knew on his own there was no way Pharaoh was going to listen. Have you ever had the temptation to think of someone you don't like or someone you want God to just move or zap out of the way with an attitude of this will show you or just you wait and see? It's not our job, though, to revel in God's vengeance against our enemies. Justice is his alone. Moses did as he was told and didn't succumb to making it personal. We can only imagine the amazement on Moses's face and the awe and wonder in his heart at having teamed up with God in this way. It would have developed a great confidence in God that he'd need in the future as he led his people into freedom. Even if Moses felt the fear, he did it anyway. Fear of the Lord is a necessary experience if we are to understand God's ways and purpose for our lives. Proverbs 9 verse 10 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. But it's an uncomfortable idea that not many of us like to talk about. It's not a natural worldly fear. It's a fear that doesn't send us running away from God, not knowing where to turn or go. But a fear that sends us running to God in awe and wonder of his power and majesty, knowing that only he can make us feel safe and secure. God moves in mysterious ways. His ways are higher than our ways. We need never feel that we have to try and work him out so we have the full understanding of every detail. It's enough to simply acknowledge and accept that he is divine, holy, awesome, powerful and above and beyond anything that we can comprehend, understand or fathom. And that in itself should beckon us to bow down in reverent fear at his feet. So just as the Ten Commandments become symbolic of the fullness of the moral law of God, the Ten Plagues of Egypt represent the fullness of God's expression of justice and judgments upon those who refuse to repent. They symbolise that salvation is only accomplished through Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Because God's final plague on Egypt and his provision for a way for Israel to be saved from that plague and delivered from slavery is a picture of how he saves sinners spiritually. The feast of the Passover commences and the angel of death passes over every threshold where each household wiped with the blood of the lamb is protected. God used blood of a different nature to represent the saving, life-giving power that only he, the almighty eternal God, possessed. The sacrificial lamb of Passover symbolised the future son of God, who would take upon himself the role of the sacrificial lamb of God. The shed blood of the Passover lamb symbolised the blood to be shed by the coming Messiah. And just as Moses warned Pharaoh that the penalty if he refused to let Israel go would be death of his firstborn, so God has warned us all in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. God warns of impending consequences if people refuse to obey him. We see that all people die. We're all frail. Even when we're young and healthy, death is a daily possibility. We all need a saviour from eternal death. And just as God provided the Passover lamb, so he sent his son to be the lamb of God, who takes away the sins of everyone who believes in him.